You are listening to the Flea Flicker Podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Flea Flicker Podcast. I'm your host, Ari Bumar, along with my close friend, Amal Rodak. What's up, Amal? What's up, man? Uh, what do you think about this week's games so far? Ooh. So last week it was interesting. I think we're going to talk about first things first. things first. Cowboys, Saints. I want to talk about like what the Saints like are doing without Drew Brees. That's like one of my main things I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, I think we're also going to talk about Kirk Cousins and his um, – his rough start to the season with the Vikings and how he's pretty much just not living up to expectations. Especially for the value. Yeah. Especially for the value. Um, I want to talk about the Eagles game and also um, I think that they're getting things together. Uh, Thursday night football last week against the Packers. Um, I want to talk about Melvin Gordon and his uh, holdout from the LA Chargers. And I want to talk about what that does to running back value. When it comes to getting uh, them getting paid as a whole position, yeah. And finally, um, I think one of the better segments, coach is on the hot seat right now. I think um, going into week five, we got a, f- a couple coaches that I think are at risk of losing their job. Come, bl- I think it's what it's called Black Monday, right? Yeah. When they fire all the coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be that's gonna be a scary time for some coaches. <laughs> it's like almost like the cut day that they had this past offseason. That's actually true. Though. And how like so many people like just so many players just like lost their jobs. It's just literally just the coaches. <laughs> Goodness, and now this time it'll be the coaches. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can get started. Okay, so so um, Eagles fan right here. Suck it, Dallas. Straight up, just <laughs> go die. <laughs> Um, so, so for those of you who aren't aware, the Cowboys lost Sunday Night Football to the Saints in New Orleans 12-10. to That's right, Dak Prescott put up 10 points against an actual good defense. So um, what do you think about the game, Amal? Uh, Saints defense really impressed me. I think more impressive, I think, was uh, the fact that there was no touchdown. There was only one touchdown the whole game. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was insane. And they held on to Ezekiel Elliott to 35 yards and 18 carries. I think that's the key to beating the Cowboys. That's the only way you can beat the Cowboys. Because, I mean, their passing game is for the most part good. And their running game, if you have Ezekiel, he's the main guy. So if you can stop him. Can't forget about Tony Pollard, though. He might go off. Oh, yeah. (laughs) In the previous week, they both both killed it. Yeah, I think you talked about that last yeah, last week, right? Like a hundred yards each, right? Yeah, that's nuts. Uh, yeah, if uh, the Cowboys can just get Ezekiel Elliott going again, they should have no problem. But the Saints really, really shut him down. And Dak Prescott did not play up to par. I'd say he did better than Teddy Bridgewater, Is that but really that's not much saying though? much considering <laughs> Dak Prescott. Who's been t- who's been having so many accolades and like all these praises of this year being maybe a top five quarterback, and so far he's been pretty good. He's but he's good. also mm-hmm. been playing in the first three weeks easy opponents: the Dolphins, Washington, the Redskins, and, um, Giants, and the Giants. Yeah, exactly. And none of those three teams are like insane defenses. The Saints, they're like they're they're I think above the Saints are a average. Top 10 defense, they're maybe. above they're way they're definitely above average defense. And he got tested and it showed. Mm-hmm. 223 yards, one interception. That's not a top five performance. But obviously, yes it was a top ten defense, but I'd expect him to do better, especially when Drew Brees isn't the quarterback right now for the Saints. Especially when he wants to get paid. I mean if he wants to be paid as the number one quarterback, you've got to put up better performances. Exactly. And I hated how people, like, how Cowboys fans wanted to think that he is worth the highest pay after the first three games. I mean, yeah, obviously you're going to have good games if you're against the Giants defense and you're against the... I think Miami with, is the telling one. With the, the Dolphins defense, <laughs> even then they struggled in the first half. But, like, that's besides the point. And it's just, he, he needs to step it up big time. And I think he'll be tested even this upcoming week. Who is he facing again? Oh, Packers, right? Yeah. Is that in Lambeau or Dallas? That is in 
Uh, that's a good question. I think it's in Dallas. Is, is it in Dallas? I believe it is in Dallas. I can double check that. Okay. Um. So again, I've said this like ten times within the last two weeks. I'm an Eagles fan, and I don't like Dak Prescott. That being said, though, I think Dak Prescott is a passable QB. Like, I think he's definitely a top half of the league QB for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah. And I think given the right team. I don't want to even think about this, but the Cowboys could win a Super Bowl. So, like, I don't want to be over here overreacting to one loss against a team that's surprising literally everyone in the league by, you know, you're starting Teddy Bridgewater. You lost literally a top three quarterback in the league. Like, to Drew Brees, I don't care if he's losing arm strength or whatever. He's been slightly declining the last couple of years, but he's still one of the best QBs of all time, or one of the best QBs in the league right now. No, and say all time. He's also... He's, his accolades are also incredible. I mean, he doesn't have an MVP, but he got robbed, what, yeah. like, I think, 2011, I think? Yeah, yeah. Against uh, Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron correct, Rodgers yeah. got it, right? So, like I said, I mean, this might be surprising to some people, but I think Cowboys fans shouldn't overreact. They're still a really good team. And as an Eagles fan, I am I think the week, I think it's going to be a week eight matchup, October 20th, I think. I think Philly is going to Dallas. That's going to be an amazing game. That's a game I'm really looking forward to because I think, A, that's going to be the biggest game of Carson Wentz's career based on the trajectories that I think both these teams are heading on right now. Like That's going to be like a heavyweight game. Definitely. But like I said, I just called the Cowboys a heavyweight. I still think they're a good team. So as much as I hate saying it, saying it the Cowboys are still very much – they don't really have that much Definitely, to worry about. Yeah. I still think it'd be crazy to think that they're not – I think they're still performing at a high. They'll still perform at a high level. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, they have the both Eagles and Cowboys have a rough schedule. I think after, but I think they'll get through it. And mm-hmm. That'll be interesting to see who's at the top of the division right now. The Cowboys are one game ahead, and the Giants and the Eagles are both tied at second, and the Redskins are last at zero and four. So talking about QBs, I want to talk about the one up in Minnesota right now, um, <laughs> Kirk Cousins. So this is what the second year into his contract, I believe. I saw this thing on Twitter. It was like three years, eighty four, right? Three years, eighty four. So twenty eight million guaranteed a year. Yeah. I saw this thing on Twitter. It was like, um, don't worry, Redskins fans, you only have like forty six percent of the contract left to play through. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I, I mean, this, the thing is, he got so much like. He, wanted, he had so much demand. People wanted him mm-hmm. when he was out of free agency. And the Vikings just came off a NFC Championship game appearance mm-hmm. against the Eagles. They got blasted by the Eagles, but that's besides the point. It's it's like Case Keenum, who's now like, he's gotten, he just got benched, but that's that's also besides the point. <laughs> if he, ha- and that offense has not changed whatsoever. Then they didn't have a, a they, they, they had, they didn't even have Dalvin Cook in that playoff game. Mm-hmm. Latavius Murray was their start, was their starting and game. McKinnon and McKinnon right both of them both of them are, are on the team. are on the team and they have, they have the same receivers Diggs and Thielen Did and you have, like and, the Diggs news though yeah oh that's yeah he might get traded he might get traded I heard he might get traded for Ramsey which yeah. hasn't I don't I don't want to see that I don't want to see that but yeah. But that's yeah, the point. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that three times within the last minute. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep it going. Yeah, the Vikings are like it's just. I think they got to move on from Kirk Cousins. Obviously, you can't really not trade this the, year. Though. You can't trade. No him. one's gonna take that twenty no one's, million guarantee. No one, no one is gonna take it. And I think no one's desperate enough to take it. There are teams that need a quarterback, obviously, but Kirk Cousins, he needs to, he needs to, needs to, needs to show that he's worth the money. And right now he's not performed well at all. He even in last year's performance he wasn't. There were many Pro Bowlers last year for quarterback that like the reserves. Did there were reserves, it? reserves. He didn't make it. And really, yeah, it's like it's just insane. He, they didn't make the playoffs last year, but like he should be making the playoffs. If you're making twenty eight million a year, oh one hundred percent, you should be making the playoffs. Like that's why even like. Quarterbacks. I know Garoppolo is right now. Garoppolo is playing well, playing They're really well. Out, so. so, but he's also getting paid a lot. So that's where the QB value. We're talking about running back, running back value soon later on. But QB value wise, you need to also double think, double check to see who's really worth it. We talked about Dak Prescott before whether he could be the highest paid. He's playing as of right now. 
pretty good. I think he could he could definitely be worth. I want to say he's completely worth it because I don't think anyone's worth getting paid like twenty percent of your cap space. Exactly. But, like I wouldn't be mad if Dak Prescott was my quarterback. The thing though about Kirk Cousins is I don't think he's terrible. I think he's an average quarterback, right? He's I think he's 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 good. Like he he he's a good quarterback, and I think given a really good team, he can carry you to a playoffs based on what his talent should be. But the thing is, I, I was just pulling it up right now. He's five and twenty seven against teams with a re- winning record in his career. Five and twenty seven. So like I I, I don't so know the math off the top of my head. He literally wins against literally the worst teams. Yeah, I think that's, that's literally fifteen point six percent win rate against winning teams. That's that's just not okay. That's ridiculous. See, that's my biggest problem with him because I think he's a decent player. I think you got some nice po- positives. He's he's never missed a game when he's started. So I think since twenty fifteen, he's played all the games he could have played. Which that, like coming from a quarterback, Wentz, like who's missed the last two playoffs, that's huge. I, I mean, like if you have stability at the position, that's good. But and like I said, he's also like he's not a terrible player, but. He has to put up those winning seasons. Like, sure, I think I'm looking at his record right now. I have it all down here. Um, 2015, his first year where he, where he completely took over for RG3. 29 touchdowns, 11 picks, 9-7. and seven. They made the playoffs and lost to Green Bay, I think, the wild card round that year. That was, that was a good season. That was, that was I think, his season. That was where um, you liked that game from, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> He, I think that was after like a Bucks game or something. 2016, 25 and 12, 8, 7 and 1, third in the division. Okay. So he's he's not winning. 2017, 27 and 13, 7 and 9, again, third in the division. So that's that's his tenure with Washington. He's he had one winning season, or I guess two, if you count the 8, 7, and 1. But the tie I think ties should just count as automatic losses for both teams. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up, it's just so annoying. Like it's so annoying it to see a tie one. week one. That's with the Lions. That's besides the point again, though. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. 2018, his first season with Minnesota, 30 and 10, 8, 7, and 1 again. Okay. Second place in division, no playoffs. So if you look back the last four seasons, he's played four full seasons. He made the playoffs once. I guess he had three winning records, but like 8, 7, and 1 is nothing to brag about. Sure. No playoff wins. And his stats have been decent. So pretty much the way I look at it is you're paying him because he's above average or just about he's around average and because he's put up numbers but he hasn't put up the wins which is what I'm looking for yeah but I, I guess I guess you could say that yeah I mean and they had a hot start coming into uh, last year last year they had a really hot start they beat the Eagles I think they almost beat the Rams I think too in, in LA if I remember that I, was like his best game of the season he went off. I think I need to double check this but I think they started like 6-0 5-0 and they, they had no, a really five, they had a tie with Green Bay like week two yeah, okay. But they had, they were like, they, they didn't have they a were, loss. They were record. a good team. Yeah, they mm-hmm. were a really good team to start the year. And then it, they just started deteriorating. And that, that division, yeah, I guess I get the Bears are there. I think but the, like, that division is the best division in the but that, but yeah, Now it is. Yeah, I agree. But I'm saying, like, last year, Aaron Rodgers wasn't playing. And mm-hmm. the Lions, the Carry Lions on Johnson was hurt. Line, they were not good. Yes. Yeah, so, so Stafford I had mean, a terrible season last year. Outside the Bears, yeah, second place is fine. I'm okay with that. But eight, seven, and one, I think that's they, just not that, okay. That's not okay because they're they're running back. You can make the argument that Dalvin Cooks right now playing as the best running back in the NFL. You can't say he's better than McCaffrey yet, but I mean he's like performing at a very very high level. He's second in the NFL right now. Four hundred. 10 yards to 411 by McCaffrey. And yeah. I think he'd be leading the league if he didn't play um, Chicago last week. Basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Chicago's defense is... Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but that defense is... It's just they're insane. amazing. Because they won a game with Chase Daniel as their quarterback against okay. a good Vikings team. This is embarrassing. Chase Daniel was on our team for like a year and a half. I thought his name was Chase Daniels until like last week. <laughs> 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 um, I want to talk about a fully guaranteed contract, though. Yeah. I think this is the death of it. Yeah. I think it's going to be a one like a one time thing, because I don't see the point in locking up that much money, like and you're, it's fully guaranteed. Yeah. Like even for like a player like Russell Wilson or something like that, Aaron Rodgers, I don't see the point because injuries. That's my thing. This game is so physical and, and like even Luck when he was playing, he got I think like eighty seven million guaranteed, and the Colts gifted him the rest of it for mm-hmm. his retirement. But that's like. 
it does I mean eighty seven million gear at that time that was like an, it was a high. And um, then Derek Carr beat him out, but I think it, it's it's still like eighty seven million guarantee. I don't know if that's needed because also he's getting hurt all the time, and they gave him the mm-hmm. contract after one year of him getting hurt. So I think the only good thing about this Kirk Cousins contract was that it was only three years, which I is, agree. But it I could have been a lot worse. <laughs> five lot years worse. locking up fully guaranteed, but this is for sure the get the death of fully guaranteed. This is the only time I've ever seen it in NFL. This is, the, I think, the last time we're going to see it for a while. I just don't see the point in a game where it's so dependent on health and it's just such a deadly game when it comes to, you know, getting hurt. Is Zeke's contract fully guaranteed? Who? Is Zeke? No, it's not. It's like, there's a decent amount of guarantees, if I remember. I think it's $60 million. Mahomes' Mahomes' contract's going to be fully guaranteed. You think so? It, I would be shocked if it was. I don't. I don't think. I don't think we're ever going to see it again, man. I, I. don't. Or do you think the team that teams will learn from the Kirk Cousins thing is that why? Or do I you mean, think well, they, we haven't seen a fully guaranteed deal since Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that's true. So like, I, I believe well, it when AB's I see it. AB's deal was technically fully guaranteed, but then he just kept on doing stupid things. Well, AB is his own thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hasn't tweeted in the last two days. His last tweet was like. Um, Finishing his English essay for English three hundred three, and he never he never like tweeted out what it what he got out of it. Thinks, uh, I'm still wondering if he ever turned it in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to talk about the Eagles, man. Okay. The, their game against the Packers that was a very very close game. Uh, Packers, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't. They should have capitalized on the two times they were in the red zone. We hyped up that defense and so much. The <laughs> defense just shut down. I think Aaron Jones should have gotten the car- a carry at the one yard line on that one drive, and I mean they had two opportunities. And then the second opportunity in the last last drive of the game, they didn't get it done. Obviously, I don't think it was completely on Aaron Rodgers for that pick, but like I think maybe even run was another good choice in that moment because they had time. So that's the way. I for me, go. I don't really. Think much of the second, uh, the second fourth, uh, the second goal line thing, whatever. Yeah. That time the game by the uh, Nigel Brown pick. The first one is where I'm like the one yard line. The that's where I'm like yeah. Matt Nagy. What are you doing? No, not Matt Nagy. No, um, Matt Lafleur. Matt. Yeah. They're all from the same tree. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it crazy that Sean McVay has his own coaching tree now? Yeah. No. That's, so that's the here. only reason Kingsbury has his job. Click a Kingsbury Lafleur and then Kingsbury, yeah. and then wait. Am I wrong in saying McVeigh comes from the Reed tree? I think. Uh, I want to say he does, but I, I, I'm I don't. Not sure. You know, I'm not gonna say anything. I don't want to like stick to that and be completely wrong. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, the Eagles game was really good. Jordan Howard. I think they need to. The Eagles need to start running the ball a lot more because Jordan Howard, 87 yards from 15 carries. Nice thunder and lightning combo. Two with touchdowns. Sanders. Sanders, Sanders, with that, Sanders with that Sanders with that kickoff return helped that completely the sparked the game for us. Yeah, exactly. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, I would have. I mean, you could easily argue that the Packers would have won the game, and the game would probably be a lot slow scoring. I think this is a signature win for Carson Wentz. I think he hasn't really had a signature win since maybe Super Bowl year. I think Thursday Night Football they went into Carolina and they won. I but I think this is the biggest win of his career so far because he went into Lambeau. You were so close to being one and three, which would have completely like. If you if you were one and three, you're basically. I would have actually given the Cowboys probably even more confidence to win the game against New Orleans. Obviously, their confidence was already at high, but if they're one and three, they had the opportunity to be three games ahead of Mm -hmm. the Eagles. You could almost call it over at that point. I mean, what the Giants would have been ahead of the Eagles. And the Giants would have been ahead of the Eagles. Exactly. It's like. They this was a must win game because you could easily make the argument saying they may not make the playoffs if they lose this game. They look the Eagles had the mentality saying it was a winner go. It was basically a win they must win game. If they lose the game, they can't afford to lose the game. That's they can't the afford to one hundred percent. And the fact that we came out with the win, I'm just so happy. Exactly, yeah, it's, it's it's a good time to be an Eagles fan at this moment. Um, but uh, speaking of the Eagles, their secondary. Just keeps on dwindling. Prayers up to Avante Maddox and Jamal Williams. I think they're both doing okay. But. I think so. But their secondary just got one man more short. I think uh, they just signed uh, the Cowboys guy. I forget his name. Skandrick. Orlando Skandrick. Skandrick. Orlando Skandrick. Uh, but then got, got Craig James. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, 
they gotta pull the plug on this. Uh, they gotta and not pull the plug, but they gotta get the, go all in. They gotta go all in on the Jalen Ramsey. Did you hear the news? It was I think you said this to me. First and second, you got turned down. It was first and second. Yeah, that was it. First and second got turned down. I think that's not enough. I personally think it's enough. But if I were the, the Jackson, the Jackson Jaguars, you got all the I'm, leverage. You got it. I'm gonna go all in. You need to get a lot. You have to week what trade deadline week eight to do anything. I mean, think about it. It's, it's crazy that they even declined the Ravens' offer. Of that's two reported, first. though. I, that's not 100%. Like, no one knows that that's true. So, but No one even knows 100% if that, if that Eagles is, is true, true, too. Yeah, I think mean, these are all rumors, to be honest. I mean, but there are credible sources. But, I mean, like, to, the the Ravens' offer was pretty insane. Two firsts and, uh, and uh, the first-round pick. What's his name? Uh, the tight end. Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst, yeah. I think that was also that's a very good offer, and I think the Eagles would probably need to go somewhere along that line, and they'd probably have to give up. Goddard. I think we have to give up two first. I don't think we're not gonna have to give up Goddard. If if Goddard's in the deal, I'm one hundred percent declining. If I'm Howie Roseman, I would too. I, I don't think even think he's Goddard's worth the that, only though. thing that keeps our offense going. I think he came back. Guess what? We're running the ball because they had a two tight end offense before with Trey Burton. And then now, and Trey Burton's actually a good tight end. Mm-hmm. And now that they lose, Goddard's I think Goddard. a top ten tight end already. That's uh, my bold prediction. Uh, I think blocking wise, he's amazing, and like he's after the catch, he's good. He knows how to catch the ball, unlike some other players on this team. I mean, see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach it there yet, but okay. he's he's getting there for sure. I think I would not be surprised if come in a couple years we let Zach Ertz go. And keep Goddard. I don't want to think about it because Ertz is an Eagles legend, in my opinion. Yeah, but, but and the Jags should give up. They should. They should ask for a lot, considering it's the you Eagles should, too. One hundred percent. And but and it's a different conference, so maybe they'll be maybe they'll be less lenient than the they'll be more lenient with the Eagles than they would be with the Ravens. Because uh-huh. the Jags are actually still contending because they're two and two. That's crazy. After um, Ramsey's outburst and trade deadline, they've won two games. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Gardner Minshew magic, man. We'll talk about that later too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so far good start. Eagles, Packers taking their first L, that's fine. Devontae yeah. Adams, I hope he's fine. I heard he's not gonna play to, against Cal uh, Dallas though. Uh, he's doubtful, I think. That's what he is right That's now. a huge loss for them, I think. But Packers, their rush game, Aaron Rodgers was their leading rusher. That's you just can't win football games that way. I think. No, not with that. No, absolutely not. Obviously, forty six yards on five carries. Aaron's Aaron Rodgers. He runs the ball, but Aaron Jones needs to step it up for sure. But also, they're not giving enough carries to Aaron. Their own line anymore. was hurt though. That was their thing. Like I think, Bakhtiari went out, or no, I think Balaga went out. Yeah. And then someone else went out, and they just couldn't run the ball. But I think Barry got screwed from the Jamal Williams injury because normally like, Aaron yeah. Jones is used to. He, he gets the majority of the carries, but not all the carries, yeah. right? So he's used to that. Here they were giving their fullback their carry. I forget exactly. his name. Uh, that was that, that, that's the first time I've seen a full, like a legit fullback in Getting this entire carry. year so far. Exactly, yeah. Um, I want to bring up one fact. Um, I don't have the exact numbers in my head, but this is Aaron Rodgers' first loss at home in Lambeau when they were leading by 10 points. And what, he's been playing, he's been starting for 10 years? Yeah, that's a pretty big stat. I, I, that's what I'm saying, man. Signature win for Carson Wentz. He didn't go off. I, th- I mean, he only threw for like 180 yards or whatever, but three touchdowns. He did what he had to do, and he was overall solid. Um, so what we've talked about like three quarterbacks so far. Yeah. I think we got to talk about we got to flip it to Melvin Gordon right now. Yeah, the run. They have the Chargers backs. Uh, Austin Eckler has been doing pretty well so far. Uh, I think uh, he's been definitely. He's been performing at a high level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he was performing at a high level to start with even last year. Uh, just in like the beginning of the season, he was performing really well too. Uh, I think he's doing the same. I think so far he's performing this season as a top five running back. This season. Okay, so we'll look at his stats real quick. He has 490 scrimmage yards. He has quick math, 80 touches, and six touchdowns in four games. That's insane. So that is insane. That's insane. <laughs> see, I think this hurts Melvin Gordon so much, and just running backs in as in a whole, because as a whole, because um, look at last year, you got Le'Veon Bell. He held out for so long, 
finally got that contract, right? It now he's not even doing well, okay? You'll look at um, Tom Gurley. I don't want to count Zeke in this because Zeke is an outlier. He has a great O-line. He has everything you need to succeed as a running back. Todd Gurley's situation is kind of similar to Melvin Gordon's situation. Injuries, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. They both are injury prone. Todd Gurley got his, got his contract before they diagnosed him with arthritis. And did he get it before the breakout season? I mean, it was after his first breakout season. So. First breakout season. Okay, so correct. Okay. Before last season, I think. Okay, yeah. So last season, yeah, last season, that contract was definitely worth it because he did get injured one time. He was the best running back in football, though. One hundred. He was one hundred percent the best running back in football, and their offense. Who cares about Jared Goff if you have? He was killing it. <laughs> any defense, literally any defense, he was killing. He, he was couldn't do anything. Them. He was torching them. It was insane. But now, the arthritis is definitely affecting him. And uh, he hasn't been performing up to par. Even in this last game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you can screw the fantasy points. He had 16 yards on five carries. Five carries. He had a touchdown, correct? Five carries. Yeah, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns on five carries. Five carries. That's just not consistent. 16 oh. yards. And I, sh- I think I sent you a stat. Jared Goff had the most completions in a game of all time. He threw time. 68 times, right? 68 times. That's the most attempts. Yeah. In a, in a game of all time. And it's just like, Goff, he had 517 yards, two touchdowns, three picks. I mean, it's Jared Goff. I'm not going to really like say anything about it. But like, R- Todd Gurley, he, that's where the money situation goes back into play. Like, was he worth it at that time? 100%. But I think... You need to take injury into effect. Because he already I mean, got injured before in college. He, had, he tore his ACL when he was in Georgia. His senior year. Then right? sophomore year, his right? fir- Yeah. Then his first year as a rookie, he got injured after he... He still did well his rookie year. Mm-hmm. And then he got injured again. He missed the first four games, I think. Yes, right? correct. Yeah. He got injured. And then uh, second year, he didn't, he was injury-free. But the team was but the team garbage. was the team was... Team was completely bad. It Third was so year, bad. he was amazing. Third year, it was amazing because he had, he had a better O line and Jared's the coach, t- Sean McVay. Sean McVay year. was the mm-hmm. was the coach, and uh, yeah, they did really well. The defense held up, so they he had good uh, breaks uh, per drive. But yeah, he's uh, he's got to step it up. And then going back to Melvin Gordon, he's getting injured a lot. Obviously, now he's coming off a holdout, so you're not going to consider that an injury break for why he, he's been missing games. But he has been missing games in the Every past. Every year. Every year. And he wants to be paid close to Le'Veon Bell money, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm wrong. Uh, he, it's, I don't think he's necessarily worth that. He's a good running back. Mm-hmm. Very good running back. But I don't but know if he's worth I don't it. think running backs are going to get paid. I think Zeke is going to be the one outlier, but I think going forward, running backs are just – I don't see a point in value on them. Say Barkley's going to get paid. Because think about this. Though. Austin Eckler is what, a sixth-round pick? Huh? Who? Uh, Eckler. He's Eckler, like a sixth-round Eckler pick, was right? a sixth-round pick. Another he's example, Lindsay killing was right. undrafted. Who? Oh, Philip Lindsay. Even better example. Bronco. Exactly. You got all these – you got these two players, okay? Perfect examples. Thanks for bringing up Lindsay. Yeah. Literally, these two players literally – Little to no draft stock, literally no draft stock put into these guys, and they're killing it on their teams. So, like, what's the point in paying a running back, say, 15 million, okay, when you could literally pay Philip Lindsay like 500k? Exactly. I don't, I don't see the point. Like, um, I want to just look at something real quick. I think Zeke was getting paid five years, six years, 80 million. I think that's that's my rough estimate. I'm going to look at it right now, but it was 90. 90? I think that sounds better. Yeah, maybe right. it was 90. I think it's... I don't know, man. Zeke's contract's different, though, because even if he's not, like, an he's insane never been running injured back, at he, all. he's not, he's not going to get... And if he does get... It's, he has an insane O-line, though. Mm-hmm. He has an insane O-line. Travis Frederick is an all-pro. He's top two, top three center. They have... It's, they have Tyra, It's just... They have Crawford... They have uh, Lyle Collins. It's just, I mean, they don't... Zeke's, Zeke, I guess you can kind of understand. But, I mean, even when Saquon Barkley gets paid, I'd be shocked if... Uh, he will get a Zeke deal. 
Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to get Zeke. Zeke, don't get out. me wrong. Saquon Barkley is definitely more he's talented. He's worth it. He's way more talented mm-hmm. than Zeke. But way more. See, my thing is, look at... I, I mean, I think Saquon's the best running back in the NFL. Like, 100%, right? What is he doing right now? He's sitting on the sideline injured. Okay? This is obviously... They'll now consider this a minor injury, considering that now there's reports that he may, he yeah, may I mean, come he's back. He's a with. freak. I don't care how long. He had four to eight weeks, if he's playing in two or whatever... That's crazy. Props off to him. He's an amazing athlete, right? But running back is a position. I think it's the most physical position. You're literally getting – your job is to get hit by people. Also, the lifespan for a running back. Lifespan for running that, – that's what I wanted to touch on. I don't know what the actual numbers are. But I think the average NFL career is like three years, right? So, like, as a running back, I don't know what you're going to do because you're pretty much getting completely screwed by your rookie contracts. No matter what, like, what year you are – you're probably if you, like I don't care where you where you're getting drafted, you're not making that much money as compared to as much of what, as what you should be paid, right? Correct. Yeah. But then as you're approaching your first contract, right? Yeah. You're reaching what your mid to late twenties. You're literally about to if you're a really good running back, you're about to hit the wall. You're about. To, I mean, Adrian there. Peterson's the only one who's like an exception, and he already blew off all his like one hundred million or whatever because he's a complete idiot. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like your entire job is getting hit. You get injured a ton. You're pretty much screwed. So like money wise, like I feel bad for these guys because they're not gonna. They should get paid, but they're not going to get paid. And yeah. Like, so like I don't know. Like if you go into like the college, college, whatever. Like people who are playing running back, they might be considering not playing running back anymore, and you might get like almost a shortage of running backs within the next like ten years or whatever. But that being said, this is all based on um. The new, do you know what the CBA is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's what 2020, I think, is when it's coming out. Yeah, so hopefully, those rules help a running back. But if I'm a GM, I'm not going to invest money in a running back at all, whatsoever. Draft stock, sure, 100%. I'm fine with investing draft stock, but money, no, I don't want to. All right, going, but all right, so let's go, let's give an example to your statement, Miles Sanders, mm-hmm. who's now a second round, who's the second, second round pick, yep, for the uh, Eagles. Eagles, yeah. It was, down the line, he becomes a good running back, quality running back. You can say he's playing along the lines of, I don't know, Nick Chubb, who was a second round back. Who was a second round okay. back? Let's say he's playing along the lines of Nick Chubb, who's right now killing it. Let's say he plays along, along the line of that, and he does that throughout the whole season for a good year and a half. He's going to get the same amount of money that Le'Veon Bell's probably going to get just off that. Okay. If he's injury free, too, there's no way. There's no way he doesn't get paid. There's no way he doesn't get paid. I agree with that, but if I'm building a team, I don't want to pay it. Pay him. It's yeah, like someone's no, gonna agree. pay him. But as a franchise owner, you don't want to pay that much, but you also don't want to lose a talent like that. A mm-hmm. talent like that, where that's un, that stays completely healthy for like a year and a half. Okay. I'm not saying he's gonna do this, but I'm saying like, if he can stay healthy for a year and a half without like having any uh, injuries okay. and plays at a very high level, I don't think there's any reason. Not like, to pay him. Not to pay him. Okay. I wouldn't want to pay him, but I also don't want to lose him because he did nothing wrong. Whew. And the I don't running know back. I about that. And the running back. I mean, position is pretty valuable. I think the Cowboys. You can argue their loss from this past week. This all you, the run game. You, you want can. To say? You can. You can argue. Okay. That is from Zeke Elliott because I mean he, thirty five yards is not a lot. Mm-hmm. And for a running back, that's supposed to be that's the highest paid. And then you have the pass rushers teeing off on Prescott and not exactly. worrying about the right. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. No. I can see it, man. I, I don't know what to think. I think it's completely based on the type of roster you're in right now. And I think that's just a whole other conversation. Like, if we're competitive or not, like, where's most of our money at? Like, if our money's in our O line, I don't care who we're paying a running back. Yeah. Who are playing at running back? Because we're going to be a good team. That's what the Colts have right now with Marlon, Marlon Mack. He's yeah. not getting. He's getting paid dimes, nickels. Yeah, he's not he's doing not, anything. He's not getting paid anything, and he's playing really well. Mm-hmm. He's playing very well. I think he's top five in rushing yards. So, and yep. that's because the Colts invested in the draft with their own line. And uh, yep, that's that's a good point. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, depends on the situation and depends on the. Injury history for the running backs to get paid now. Okay, do you want to talk about a couple coaches in the hot seat right now? Yeah. Okay, so I got Adam Gase and Jay Gruden. So for those of you who don't know, Adam Gase has been a head coach for four years, three with the Jets, and 
one with his new team currently. Wait, sorry, I got that flipped. Three with Miami, yep. and then one with his new team right now, um, the New York Jets. Currently, he's 0-4. So I looked this up. Um, throughout his entire career as a head coach, he's 23-28. and 28, So he has around a 45% chance of winning his games. Um, and if you look at the last three years, okay, so 2017, 2018, and right now, he is 25th and 28th when it comes to um, 25th in yards per game, 28th in yards per game, and then 31st and 26th in points per game and yards per game. And then right now, he is 32nd and 31st in yards and points per game, respectively. Yeah. So his entire career, if I remember, it's based on 2013. What player? Do you know? Peyton Manning. Yeah. He was the offensive coordinator, right, for Peyton Manning. And his entire career, pretty much riding off that. But the fact is, I don't care who your quarterback is, you should not be putting up literally like bottom seven performances as an offensive quarter. And so my thing is, I was saying this to you before we started, if Lincoln Riley is available, from, uh, for those of you who don't know, Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley, he's amazing. He's done so many great things. With Taking the last two Heisman trophies. Heisman's trophies. Winners. What he's doing with Jalen Hurts right now is incredible. <clears throat> he's gonna, he might, he he might win. He's <laughs> probably favorite right now, 100%. If you can get a younger guy who's proved, I'd rather take a game one a younger guy than on this complete weirdo. So develop Sam Darnold. You never know, man. I think, like I said at the beginning of the show, it's a bit early for this to do a hot seat thing. But just looking at it, your team is zero four. I don't care if your player, your team had mono, your quarterback had mono, which is just weird. How did you get kissing disease, Sam Darnold? But that's that's beside the point. Um, he hasn't been good. His, he had one season where he made the playoffs. I think his record was 10-6 with Miami his first year. After that, he's been completely garbage. So I think if I'm the Jets, I'd rather fire him at the first year, pull a um, – what was the Cardinals head coach last year? Actually, I, have no I don't clue. remember his name. He's a defensive <laughs> coordinator for some of that. But. Bull, no, it's not Bulls. Bulls are the Jets. It's uh, – um, yeah, no, I don't know. I want I kind of want to look that up, but that's that being said, um, he's been complete garbage. I think you got to pull a Colts, uh, a Cardinals, fire this man, get him out of here. Steve, yeah. Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes. Yep. Yeah. So fire him like you fired Steve, Steve Wilkes, get him out of here, and I think you got to get a player, who, uh, a coach who's actually who has some upside because right now I don't see any upside in that. Interesting. So you only have two coaches that's currently on the hot seat. I have a bunch, actually. Really? Okay. So, all right, we'll get started with uh, the obvious ones. You obviously said the obvious, two. I agree with Gase, and I agree with Gruden. Jay Gruden, not John Gruden. Yep. John Gruden will never be on the hot seat. I think we can both agree yeah. with that. Because, I mean, that 10-year contract. 10-year, 100 million. <laughs> why would you release him? There's no point. Mm-hmm. You might as well play. Do you out. release the coach or do you fire them? I think, I think you, you could fire, fire him, him, but he'd get paid. Yeah. He gets the money anyway. So, And I don't think he's a bad coach. He just Same with Jay Gruden, to be honest. I don't think he's a terrible coach, but the situation. he's just not amazing. That situation is just weird. Um, Jay Gruden. He I hasn't agree, been yeah. good. He had, I think, I had this written down somewhere. His best season was 9-7, and seven, and he is... He has a, a 0.423 win rate, so he's won like 42% of the So games. I'm going based off now my hot seat based on situational. Okay. So uh, if Cowboys don't win the Super Bowl, or at least make it to the Super Bowl, make it to the Super Bowl, we'll do that. If they don't make it to the Super Bowl, uh, Jason Garrett should be on the hot seat. Not fired, but on the hot seat. Actually, he might already he might be get on. Fi- I think he he's might, on he the might hot get seat. fired. Because actually, this is his last year of his extension. If exactly, I'm correct. yeah. And they have an ex- Jerry Jones was uh, has an extended extension. I remember this. seeing that report. So I think, mm-hmm. yeah, if they don't, I don't think they'll make the. He'll make it if. Uh, if they don't. I think they, they got to make, make it to the championship game on there. You think championship game? I think Super Bowl. Okay. All right. This, but yeah, he's he needs to have a successful season, period. 100%. So he should have been. I mean, what this is. His they need to year. be a top four team in the NFL by the end of this season. If they're not top four, this is his tenth year. Um, I think this is going into a Marvin Lewis situation. Not as bad, obviously, but he's never made it to a championship game. If I'm correct, right? right? And that team's that team is way too talented, talented to not do exactly. it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one that I have. This is kind of all right. So Mike Tomlin. I understand that they just came off a great win against the Bengals, but it's the Bengals. They're one uh, three, right? Yeah, they're the Steelers are now one and three. The Bengals are one four. But Mike Tomlin, I don't think he should be given necessarily a break this season. 
because Big Ben's out. Okay. But I think he shouldn't just take it leisurely saying, oh, it's, it's a break season. We can afford to be bad. Because they gave up their first round draft no, this year. I don't think see the point of that. I don't care how good Minka Fitzpatrick is. You should have seen that Mason Rudolph isn't that good. I mean, he has he has room to improve. Don't get me wrong. I think he could definitely be a good player. But I don't see the point in trading yeah. away a first round pick when this could have been your year to, you know. The Dolphins are most likely going to have a top 10 pick. The this, Dolphins? The Dolphins. Oh, will the, have the Steelers pick. Yeah, yeah, the Steelers yeah. pick. Yeah, exactly. They're going to have yeah. a top 10 pick with that Steelers pick. And I think uh, he shouldn't be given a break. I don't think he should get fired. I don't think, I think he, he signed an extension through 2020. So he, he's still he signed can't, through He can't get fired. I, I, I don't see him getting fired. But he should be on the hot seat if they get under five wins. I think year. we're a year bit early for him. I think we should be talking about this next year. Correct, correct. I'm mm-hmm. fine. I mean, I agree with you. But I'm saying... For hot seat purposes, okay, that yeah. that's where I'd have him. Uh, another one. This is an extremely. This might make you. Actually, no. We'll start with the easy one. Cliff Kingsbury. If they go, uh, if they win less than three games, he should be gone too. Actually, he really? should be gone regardless. I don't think he's the right. Co- he's the right coach for him, man. That's I shocking. I haven't watched a Cardinals game this year, he, so I can't say anything. He, he's but, not like. He's too offensive. Co- offensive minded. I don't know. I I really. He'd be a good coordinator. He's not I a think good... my biggest problem with the Cardinals is he that he didn't even have sense. a winning record with Texas Tech. So how the hell is he going to have a winning record with an NFL team? I don't think the Colts are going to do it, though. I don't see the point of firing when you just fire Oh, you Wilds. mean Cardinals. Cardinals, yeah. Card- yeah, what did I say? You said Colts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Cardinals, no, they're not going to. He's not. I'd say he'd be on the hot seat as in, like, man, I, this is your rookie year, but you got to start performing next year. But I think he's. I think he's got a good I'm, two. In my years. opinion, he's in the same situation as Gaze. Really? My that's my okay. opinion. Okay, that's bold I mean, ball. I like it. That that's like, it's kind of insane. Obviously, the Cardinals have a crappy defense, but like, see, I disagree with you pretty strongly, just because, like you just said, their entire team is mediocre. So like, I can't blame. I don't care how well you're, how good of a coach you are, unless you're Bill Belichick, of course. But I don't care how good of a coach you are if. Your team sucks. You're not going to win that many games. So I can't put that on Kingsbury. I think some... that's why Shanahan got a break last year uh-huh. with the Niners. Jimmy G got hurt, but their team's still good. But yeah, outside the okay. quarterback got hurt. That's why I think I think he he's going to get he's on the hot seat. Okay. Another one. This is probably going to be insane. If the Eagles he's told me go this. under five hundred, <laughs> they should fire. Strongly disagree. I don't think that's ever going to happen. 100%, man. I, I, he won us the Super Bowl. I mean, this isn't like a Mike I, McCarthy I, situation where, like, I thought Nick Foles won you a Super Bowl. <laughs> that's, that's different, man. <laughs> I wish you all could see my face right now because I'm just sort of confused. confused. <laughs> no, um, I think he's not on the hot seat at all. I don't think he should be on the hot seat. Did I, you see his coaching performance against the Packers, man? That was... I think that might be his his best game of all time, including the Super Bowl, or it's definitely like top three. Dude, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's I'll put it this way: the Eagles' schedule after the Jets game is gonna be very, 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 very hard. Mm-hmm. And, and they're playing they're playing only teams that like over five hundred that are playoff yeah. teams. You can even argue the teams that they're playing after this are all playoff teams. Yep. They're playing the Bills. They're playing the Packers. They're playing now. They already played the Packers. They played the Bills. They played the Bears. They played the Patriots. Patriots. I'm going to the Seahawks. Seahawks game. Seahawks. That should be good. It's they're, they're, it's a lot. But yeah, that's the only two in my opinion. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so do you want to go over a rundown of last week's games? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, we already talked about Packer uh, Eagles Packers. For those of you who don't know, Philly won thirty four to twenty seven in Lambo. We'll move on to um, Tennessee at Atlanta. Um, I think I picked Atlanta in this, and you picked Tennessee. Tennessee walked all over them, 24 to 10. Yeah. I don't know what the hell is going on in Atlanta right now. I don't know what's happening. Like, they beat the Eagles. And, and then after that, they've gone downhill. Gone down Matt Ryan just hasn't been good, right? I'm been, no, it's not that he's not even being good. It's just like... I don't even know. It's just insane. <laughs> just no one knows the what's defense, going on. I mean, Keanu Neal did get hurt, but even then, like, jeez, that's not. Uh-huh. Okay. That's not good at all. Redskins at 
the Giants. Danny Dimes, 24-3. They stomp all over the Giants. Dwayne Haskins got started what, after the first quarter or something like that? Yeah, correct. And I don't think that's a smart decision at all. You're just throwing into the wolves. Your team is mediocre. Yeah. And I don't think, if you're Jay Gruden, I don't see how Dwayne Haskins is going to save your job at all. Yeah, no, for sure. That, that That's like, I don't even know why. He definitely should not be starting this week. I swear he should not start this week. Is he starting? I don't, I don't want. Is, right? I don't want him to. He's against New England. You're like asking for it if you're going to start this week. No, please don't start this week. Please. If Jay Gruden wants to save his job for at least one more week. Okay. Should. I think I, I, I was talking to my brother before I came here. Um, we'll, we'll run a quick thing. Um, so 62% completion percentage, okay? Yeah. 950 yards. Seven touchdowns, four picks. Okay, that's player one. So I don't know if you got that in your head or not. But um, second player, sixty-five percent completion percentage. This is all off the top of my head, by the way. Five fifty, and then three for two. Who's player one? Who's player two? Player two. Player two is, is someone we cru- we hate on a lot. Jared Goff. No. Player two is not Jared Goff. Trubisky's. Not? Trubisky's player two. Player one is. Hmm. Not sure. Who player Case one. Keenum. <laughs> So my thing is Case Keenum isn't terrible. I think you just start him in. Uh, and also, uh, that's our Trubisky fact of the day. Um, Case Keenum is better than him. <laughs> <laughs> chill, chill, chill. He's, he's, he's injured right now. Wish he wasn't injured before, but yeah. Uh, yeah prayers he's... up to Mitch Trubisky. I yeah. hope he's healthy. Um, uh, Chargers Dolphins game, we can skip over that 30 to 10. We don't need to talk yes, about it. Yes, that was beat down. Uh, uh, Raiders at Colts? Raiders at Colts. I was disappointed, but... I just found, I mean, just that day they ruled out T.Y. Hilton. Darius Leonard was ruled out. Uh, Did Malik Hooker play? Malik, Cook, Malik game, right? Hooker had uh, towards meniscus, so he's out. So I guess it's understandable. I still think the Colts should have won this game. I think if they played again, they would win this game. I don't think the Raiders are a bad team. But I, think I, the, be I think this says more about the Raiders than the Colts, yeah, actually. Yeah, I agree. The, the Raiders played really well. Uh, Derek Carr was pretty well on point. Uh, J- Jacoby Brissett, even with getting that pick six towards the end of the game, three touchdowns, two sixty five. Brissett's yards. solid, man. I'll take that. I want to talk about that. him next week about whether or not you think he's a first. Because they play Sunday night against the Chiefs. Yep. This upcoming week, so we'll see how he does. Obviously, Chiefs defense it's almost just as bad as the Cardinals defense, <laughs> but you can't. Obviously, they're not, but they're definitely they're not blow good. Tier. Yep. So yeah, uh, we'll talk about that for sure next week. Uh. Panthers at Texans. Panthers at Texans. Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen's two and out. So as a starter, he's two and out. Which is, Six touchdowns, zero picks. He's got. He's done better than Cam Newton's past eight games as a Panther. Did you see that? Stat? Really, I didn't yeah. see that. What was he it? has the same amount of wins as Cam Newton this past eight games. Holy shit! That's insane. <laughs> that is nuts, right? It's two two thirty two. He didn't get yeah. any touchdowns this game. Two thirty two. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey's led the, led the, a beast. Led the team in. Rushing and Leaving the league right now, 411. 93 mm-hmm. yards, one touchdown, and 27 carries on rushing, and then receiving 10 receptions for 86. Okay, I remember his rookie year, 2017, I want to say. Yeah. Everyone was writing him off saying Kamara was going to be better. Right now, I think McCaffrey is slightly better. I think he's more of a worker back. I think I'll take McCaffrey. I think he's. That's a close one. Though. He's. I think, no, it's definitely close. I think this is just like. I think it's like 1A, 1B, whoever you're picking. You're both going to get an amazing like, player out of it, but. I think people are writing him off almost. I think in running, rushing though, I'd rather have McCaffrey. Actually, no, they're. I think I'd rather have them. I'd rather have McCaffrey in both. Yeah, that, that's true. Actually, that's tough. Yeah, I agree. I I would probably have McCaffrey in both too. I mean, I have McCaffrey in my fantasy league, so I can't really say bad about him. Um, Chiefs Lions. Chiefs Lions. Wow. That that, in my opinion, might have been up there for game of the week. That was a I very, very I, I caught the end game. of that game. This was the first time I saw Patrick Mahomes getting shut out, zero touchdowns. Mm-hmm. No, he zero. was not good. I mean, he was three fifteen okay, yards. I, I mean, I, that's expected. I expect Mahomes the to yard, get hundred yards, but, but three fifteen yards, like zero touchdowns. I, I wanted this Detroit says more to about this out. says more about Detroit, in my opinion. I think Detroit the and the Chiefs are vulnerable to good defense. That was the Lions' defense. Really played well. I I mean, props to them. I, it's just insane. I think I think we gotta have a segment about the Lions next week, one hundred percent. I no. think maybe we can get in a uh, Chase, our friend Chase. He's a Lions fan. We, I want to see his the look on his face. They, they <laughs> almost beat the Chiefs. I think second best team in the AFC. Yeah. And I don't. 
I don't. Like, they, they, you can make the argument. You can obviously make the argument that they might be the best team that I've seen. What they're performing at that level right now. Mm-hmm. You can't. I mean, there's three good teams right now in the NFC North. You could say four, but the Kirk Vikings. Cousins, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, three really good. teams. I think there's there's second best team. I want to say. I, it's really it's like one A one A one B. Yeah. C, when it when it's all of a sudden done, I think also second best team. I think Packers are slightly ahead. I think Bears Bears if they pick up the quarterback Play, or if their defense yeah. is just insanely good to shut out every team, then maybe they're first. So you never know. But yeah, as of right now, they're playing Detroit's at really a very high level. level. I think I was crapping on Matt Patricia earlier, like maybe like week one, week two, or whatever. Because I mean, you let the Cardinals tie with you first of all, but he's I don't know if this is all on him, but he, Matt Stafford, everyone on that team is playing their hearts out, and it's fun to see. I wanted them to pull out this game so hard. I was so mad when Mahomes pulled some stuff off of that, but yeah, and then Browns Ravens. That one was a very, very... The Chubb one player of the week. Chubb, 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 Chubb. I love him. 165 mm-hmm. yards, three touchdowns. I think Odell needs to step it up, though. The fact that they beat the Ravens with Odell, Odell basically not existent, yep. that says something. That shows, you, that shows you how well their team is built, I think. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I, I mean, think they need to start feeding Chubb more. Feed Chubb more, I think... I think Mayfield needs to get in a better rhythm. Yeah. But when he does, I mean, the, right now, this is the first time they're winning the AFC North in, like, since, like, 2014 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're not it's first. Crazy. They're tied with the Ravens, but since they but just they have beat the, them. Yeah, they have tiebreaker. Yeah, exactly. So, that's really good for the Browns right now. I don't I think, think this uh, says much about the Ravens, in all honesty. I'm still pretty high on them. I agree. Lamar Jackson, three touchdowns, two picks, 247 Most yards. of that was in garbage time, to be honest, but... Still, I'm not that worried for the. I'm Ravens. not worried about the I think Ravens. This is more Browns just took the game over. Ravens, the yeah, I think definitely one of those teams. Or two teams are winning the division. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be a toss up. Probably towards the end of the season, we'll find out which of the yep. two are winning. 15, and 16. That, and I think the second place one will definitely make it as wild card. I, mean, I think the, the Browns is too weak. The, man. Brown, the Browns are right now climbing steadily upward. Upward, yep. Uh, and you could have made the argument they could have beat the Rams last week. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, Nick Chubb, keep killing it. Jarvis Landry did really well, 167 yards on eight receptions. Mm-hmm. Brought back his classic Miami Dolphins performance that he used to bring. <laughs> uh, Patriots-Bills was another candidate. That was a, kind of an uninteresting game because of the low scoring, 16 I feel bad for Josh Allen. I think that they have Josh Allen, they pull that game out. I agree. He did not have a good game, though. He had three picks for 150 yeah, yards. Yeah, but Matt Barkley... Matt Barkley's not the answer, man. <laughs> I, I, it's just, I kind of feel bad. Tom Brady was not the answer either, though, bro. What? I think the Bills uh, might have a Jesus top three defense. Christ. 150 yards, one pick. Ugh. He did nothing. He did nothing. And I think Frank right, Gore. Frank what Gore. What did he do? I, I didn't watch the game. 109 yards on 17 carries. <sighs> the ages wonder, 100%. He's, Damn. I think he's never been like a top five running back, but he's going to make the Hall of Fame just purely on his longevity. He was top five, I think, when he was on the Niners. I think he had a couple years, where, but like he, he, he was most of his career, he's never been like a crazy. He's like, never been crazy back. But he's, he's just been, been consistently like, putting yeah. up like a thousand scrimmage yards every season. Um, I think right now my picks for the AFC Wild Card: Buffalo one hundred percent, Cleveland one hundred percent. The teams we just talked about. Yeah, I so think right now I can't. I, I agree with you. I can't change that. I, I mean, I really can't. The way things are going for Buffalo, like if they almost beat the Patriots this way, like. Who knows? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say anything because the Patriots are amazing. They're still probably going to win this division, but it's going to be a tight race for the first time in like five years. Because the Bills are giving everyone a run for their money. Yeah, they're, they're, they they obviously have to make the Bills, so people are like, "Oh shoot, they're like not that good." Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Uh, Bucks Rams. Jeez, that we already talked about golf. Um, Jameis was... Winston. We were having this conversation earlier. Um, is Jameis Winston a top five QB right now? I think that's what. We'll yeah, that's what right. that was. That was what we were asked. Yeah, I think he's been performing. Uh, I, no, I can't say that yet. No way. I, I think, think there's so Mahomes, far the last Mahomes, couple Jackson, games, he's been playing top five. Mahomes, Jackson, there. Prescott, he had a down week. Wentz, he's, he's there. Wentz is definitely there, and uh, uh, you could say there's a few other players. You definitely see. A few I other think um, Bruce Arians is doing wonders for that team. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, Chris Godwin is going crazy. Mike Evans is going crazy. Everyone except O.J. Howard is having a game. <laughs> O.J. Howard, I mean, I, I think I saw this earlier. Um, I knew he was not going to have a good season just because Bruce People Arians doesn't use the tight ends. People were hyping Bruce Arians doesn't use his tight ends at all, and I just thought maybe that would carry over from Arizona, even with a good tight end, and I was right. We were talking earlier about Chris Godwin and mm-hmm. Mike Evans. Both – Mike Evans had a good game. Chris Godwin had an even better game. 12 receptions, before. 172 yards, and two touchdowns. Yep. Week four was like 180 for three for Mike Evans. Like, they're going to be – I think I said this earlier. They're going to be really close uh, at the end so. of the season. No, they'll be close. And we already talked about Todd Gurley. He needs to step it up for the future. And they just need to start giving him more carries. I think. Fantasy points, you guys should be happy. He did get two touchdowns. Yeah, so but that's not consistent production. That's not whatsoever. consistent production. Um, you should be lucky. Seattle, Arizona. Yep. Uh, Chris Carson, good, good job. 104 yards, two, 22 carries. That was very good. The Seahawks, I'm seeing using a lot more of Will Disley. Will Disley was the what? The surprise player this week? I was yeah. seeing things on it. About it on Twitter about him and for the Cardinals about. Deontay Johnson. Deontay, who is that? I don't know who that. I don't know who that is. Uh, he, he's, <laughs> he's a receiver for the Cardinals. He did pretty well. But oh, they is did, he the rookie? Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's pretty, I remember he's this. Pretty good. But uh, um, what's it called? For running backs, David Johnson had a good game though. Ninety-nine yards re- receiving and forty yards rushing. That's a pretty good performance. I, I, well, I'm so happy to see David Johnson do something. And good. Kyler Murray was an awful. I think Kyler Murray will get his first one good this week. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, Bears, Vikings. We um, already talked about Kirk Cousins. Dalvin Cook, he did. I, I don't if you shut down Dalvin Cook, the offense is done. I mean, I can't really criticize Dalvin Cook against the, no, the, I can't Bears, the Bears. Because he killed it the past three weeks. And it was against the Bears. The Bears. The Bears, so... Best defense say, in football, man. So you 1985 can't, old. I mean, man. you really can't say anything about what Dalvin Cook did. Diggs had a good game. Diggs had a good game, but we also talked about how he might get traded. Mm. And uh, I think he will get traded, actually. I would not be surprised. I would not. I mean, I he's not practicing right now, so we'll see what happens. He should be there. traded. I don't think he... I, don't, I think trading him is just hard You presence. think... I agree with that. You're but just saying for his player. sake, for his sake, he should be traded. Cause he's not. Yeah, I Because he's that. like not like, I don't know. He's not getting. I don't know. He's he's, he's too good decent, on the team. But he's just. He's too, there's they're Thielen and Diggs in my opinion are both like same level. Oh, they're one hundred percent the same level. They're, they're different players like when it comes to what they can do, but yeah. the same like output. That's why I think he wants to move on. Okay, uh, Jaguars at Broncos. I want to talk about the Broncos real quick. Um, they had first three games zero sacks, then five sacks this game, and um. Congrats to Von Miller. He cost 100 sacks, I think. So, like, that's well-deserved. 100% a Hall of Famer. I was even the commentary in this game. This game, so what the commentator said was quite interesting. A lot of Von Miller's sack, his sack count should be way higher. So what they were saying is a lot of his sacks have been, like, instead of been penalties or, like, penalties on, like, like a holding penalty yeah. or, like, an unnecessary roughness penalty on the offense. So, like, a lot of his sacks were, like, always negated. Like, because people had to hold on to Von Miller because... Mm-hmm. They couldn't, they couldn't stop him. He's an unstoppable force. So he would definitely his his number should be way higher than hundred. He's one hundred percent. I think he's one hundred percent a Hall of Famer. Him, JJ Watt, in my opinion, one hundred percent going down. Definitely. I think it's like literally those two are the best pass rushers within the last decade. Yeah, that we've seen. Yeah, and then yeah, and then uh, recently now Dumb Mac is getting there. Donald, Donald is now getting there. Donald has a chance to go down as the greatest DT, but we'll see. Uh, Minshew Magic. Oh, he came yeah, back yeah, from what, 17 to 0? Yeah, uh, he's killing it. 213 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Minshew Magic is carrying on. 2 0. It's going to be crazy. 2 and 1 as a starter. Next week. He should be 3 and 1 as a starter because uh, he. Texans. Oh, Texans. Nah, I feel bad for him, man. Fournette, though, came back strong. 29 carries, 225 yards. He was playing that vintage AP performances. Very good, very, very good performance from him. And D.D. Westbrook, 66 yards on five receptions, also very good. This is just fun to see the Jaguars just coming back. No, it makes it interesting for the AFC South. Mitch is fun to see. And fun fact, the AFC South, each team's 2-2. Yep, I saw that. It's each little, team perfectly balanced, this whole thing Perfectly be. balanced. So I think Shout that's going to be Thanos. a very interesting division. 
Um, Cowboys at Saints. We already talked about that. We don't need to touch on that much. Do you want to talk about the Bengals and Steelers game Monday night football? Uh, <laughs> kind of not really because okay, um, it's, that was expected. That was a boring game. I tried watching it and I went to bed. I was just like, this is not worth watching. I agree. That, that was probably probably the worst game of the week. <laughs> um, all right, looking at the next week's schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can start with the Thursday night game, which is Rams against Seattle. It's in Seattle. And it's in Seattle. Um, I looked this up. Rams are 1.5 point favorites going into, into this game. I think this is my upset of the week. I think Seattle pulls it off. I agree. It can't be an upset if we both choose it all. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real. I think the fact that it's in Seattle, um, I think Seattle at home is a good team. They're, I think they're going to make the playoffs. 100%. Um, the Rams, uh, Jared Goff, man. Um, no, nah, it's not even Jared Goff. I think it's Todd Gurley that needs to step it up. Jared Goff, he needs to step it up too. Don't get me wrong, but I think Todd Gurley needs to step it up to, for the money he's getting paid. Jared Goff's also getting paid a lot. He's, I think they're he's still to, accountable 100%. I think both. you're going to regret the Jared Goff contract. I agree. But uh, they, they can't replace him. They, he's, at this point, they can't replace him. The thing is, you got these quarterbacks who are, we already talked about this, I don't know why I'm going back into it, but you got these quarterbacks who are, like, they're at the point where it's like, they're not amazing, but they're good enough to where you can't let them hit the open market. And I think that's what happened with Jared Goff. Yeah. Jags Panthers, who you got? Who do you think I got? Minshew Magic all the way over it's Kyle in Allen. Carolina. Yeah. Really? I think I got Carolina here. Man. Okay. That's I think it's a fun game to see Minshew Magic. Two if Minshew Magic wins, though, I'm on his. I'm on his day, like, in a <laughs> I like Kyle Allen too. I think he's like. I think this year you got to stick him to win as long as you can. I'm fine with starting Kyle Allen as long as I can. Yeah. I think, I think Allen and Minshew is a battle between two quarterbacks who you didn't think would be playing well, but they are. And yeah. I think it'll be a fun game to see. Definitely. Uh, Pats, Redskins? Um, we don't need to talk about this at all. I don't need to talk about it either. Please don't start going Haskins. I don't want his debut to be against the freaking Patriots. I have this as my blowout of the week. That's That <laughs> will be the blowout of the week. It's either going to... No, no, that... That's the only one that could be blowout. Of the week. I could see Jets Eagles being blowout too. It depends on if Donald starts or not. Exactly, but I think uh, right now, yeah, that's probably gonna be blowout of the week. I think they might even be able to bench Brady still in that game. But yeah, uh, next game uh, we have Bills Titans. Um, I I want to see what's going on with Josh Allen. I think right now I'm gonna pick Buffalo, just because I think that defense is good enough. But it completely depends on Josh Allen. I want Buffalo to win. I think Tennessee. I, think I would Tennessee. not be surprised if ten- Tennessee. I think in Tennessee, which doesn't mean anything at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh uh, yeah, Josh Allen doesn't play. I, I think Tennessee. I agree with you. But if he does play, if he does play, Buffalo. then I'm probably gonna switch my pick to Buffalo as well yeah. because uh, that defense is just too good, and Marcus Mariota can't handle. But Derrick Henry has been killing it. I I was I th- I don't know if I told you this, but I did not like Derrick Henry coming into the season. I thought, like fantasy wise, I thought all his production was like within the last four games. I think and I made I, this argument with you. I think he might be the most valuable player. You to said the team. that, yeah. I, I don't think, know what I think about that, but you, I could see a decent argument. Now you can see the decent argument because he just carried the the tight again. Game. So we'll see again. It's nice We're, to see him put up those games that he had in Alabama. Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Ravens Steelers. Ravens at Heinz Field. I think I'm gonna go Mason Ravens. Rudolph can develop. I like. I want to see Ravens. Mason Rudolph do well, but I can see Ravens as well. Um, Cardinals Bengals. One of these teams are gonna win a game. This is my uh, no one cares about uh, game of the week. Just no one. Uh, if you're watching this game and you're not a fan of these two teams, just go do some work or something. Like, there's no point. Um, I agree. Okay. I, I had the Bengals winning, but you had the Cardinals winning, right? I have the Cardinals winning. They um, have a tie, at least. They have a tie, at least, on the record. And it's against fair the Fair enough. Um, you know what? I'm predicting a tie for this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, this no, game no. might be worse than the Patriots game for yeah. me. No, I, I got Cardinals winning. But it's in Cincy, so you never know. But yeah, definitely. Falcons, Saints. 
Falcons Saints. I thought Falcons was... Texans. Mike. Okay. Um, Falcons, Texans. Falcons at Texans. Um, I think we said this earlier. What the hell was going on in Atlanta? I can't pick them. With the way, um, I mean, the Texans haven't been amazing whatsoever. Deshaun Watson's been the shock for me. He's not been performing. He's not been performing. That entire team is just. He was supposed to be a top three QB at like performance wise this year. He's supposed to be like top. He was supposed to be good, and he just hasn't. He's not. He's not been performing. The Falcons are just a complete. They're just a no show. So I'll pick the Texans, but grudgingly, I don't like the Texans that much this year. Neither do I. Uh, but yeah, I'll take the Falcons. I think they rebound. I hope they rebound. Make the division interesting. So yeah, I think Falcons win. Bucks Saints. This is my sneaky game of the year. Uh, game of the week. Game, game of the, the week. Year. Yeah, <laughs> it might be game of the year. You never know. Uh, this is gonna be a close game because Bucks are. Uh, Bucks just came off a killer win against one of the best teams in the NFC. Um, and the Rams. I think Jameis Winston keeps it going. But it's in it's in New Orleans. So, I think New Orleans wins that. I think New Orleans. I think it's going to be a good game. I just don't think Jameis Winston is on fire though. Mm-hmm. Like, like, uh, like, yeah, I, think. I want to see what he gets paid at the end of the year because this is the last year of his contract. Correct. Yeah. Um, Vikings Giants. I don't. I kind of actually do want to talk about this one because the Vikings. Okay. The Vikings are two and two. The Giants are two and two. And they're both going in completely different directions right now. It's in New York. If uh, and I know Saquon Barkley is most likely not going to play this week. He's one hundred percent not going to play. Yeah, uh, I think the Giants are going to win this game. I'm taking okay. it on the limb. I know for a fact the Vikings are on are, are favorite. There's no way they're not. Oh no, I had the I had the Vikings winning, but I I could see it for sure. I mean, that could Danny Dimes, be, man, that can be a sneaky good my game of the week. Mm-hmm. But if the Vikings win, I will not be surprised. But yeah, that's my uh, that's my pick. I could uh, see that I could see anyone winning that game, but I think the Vikings overall just talent buys. I think they're better, so I'll pick them. Another good game, Bears Raiders. I did not think about this game when I picked it. Um, <laughs> I I know oof. not a lot of people don't think about it, but the Raiders are now starting to climb up. I understand that they don't have like the best. They just I. What do you think about the Vontaze Burfecht? That's, I wanted to ask you that when, it, when we were talking about the Eagles. I kind of want to talk about that because that's been a take a lot. That's been like a I'm happy take. they did it. I think he should be fine for did, the bad, bad for the. Did game. you see what he would like? I saw a highlight or whatever. He was like, he, be he was like, NFL, he was like laughing as he was walking smiling, off the field. He was, smiling, yeah. he was like overjoyed that he was getting ejected or whatever. I think it's happened so many times. I saw this fact. He's lost like four million in suspensions mm-hmm. and like four hundred k of fines or something like that. I think. It's one hundred percent warranted. Right now, I mean, we said this earlier. When I'm talking the Raiders, about, in my opinion, will not be better off with him because he's, better off. he's he's obviously a good player, but he's older be, too. You can't, uh, you can't you can't you can't be doing that. I thought you'd learn from your mistakes. Uh, Clearly, that man. I mean, he's literally the A B, except like on field issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the Raiders, yeah, though, I um, think the I think the Bears win the game. That should be Raiders are two and two. I did not know that. Um, you think Bears are gonna win this game, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Carr I is playing good, but I agree. I think Chase Daniel is somehow better than Mitch Trubisky, so <laughs> well, I'll take the Bears. All right, okay, yep, I'm taking the Bears as well. Uh, Jets, Eagles. I don't really want to talk about it because I don't want Sam make... Darnold's not playing. That might even be the blowout of the week over the Redskins. I'm not games. making my predictions on any Eagles games this year because every game we've picked, I've picked, we've lost. So. I'm not. You know what my prediction is gonna be, but I'm not gonna say it that loud. Okay. Fair I'm superstitious this year. <laughs> uh, Raven Steelers. Oh, we already talked. About we that already game. talked about yeah. that, and then we uh, we already talked about Bills Titans. Uh, I think we still got the Packers game. Packers, Packers at Cowboys. Bron- Packers at Cowboys. Who do you Ooh. have? Ooh, who's the favorite in that game? I'm gonna look it up real quick. That's... I want to say it's. I want to say no. It's going to be it's Dallas going to be Dallas because it's in Dallas because that the thing is that's going to be damn that's going to be close. Uh, that might be. I'm trying I to find the odds have... real quick. It is um, Dallas negative three point five. Okay, so they are favorites. so they are favorites. So I think Dallas does win. I think. Okay. I think. Uh, you think they bounce back? I think they'll bounce back off this one. I don't and think, it's at home. I don't think the Packers lose two in a row. That's what I think. That's another 
this strong point. I also don't think the Cowboys lose two in a row, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you, you can go either way. I think I'll take... You'll take I think practice. Aaron... Pretty much, uh, AT&T Stadium is literally his second home. Like, he's the daddy he, in that stadium. Yeah, that's... So, that's I think I'll take him and pull something game. off again. That's a damn good game. Uh, Sunday night, Colts Chiefs. I'll be honest, I'd be crazy not to say the Chiefs. Yep, I'm gonna Chiefs. say the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'd be, it's sad to root against my team. I'm I, gonna, I'm gonna root for the Colts, but I, I want to root against the Chiefs so hard. I uh, think this, but, this game has the potential of being close game and a potential of being upset, but there's no way because Mahomes was on another level. Yeah, Brissett's good. Brissett's maybe tier three. He's tier one. Okay, at the top so of the who, tier one. We can do this later, I think, but I want to get a tier list. Tier I want to list? see your rankings yeah, that's versus gonna be mine, interesting. see yeah. how that goes. We can definitely do that in the future. And then the Monday night game. Browns, Browns at Niners. That's a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky good game of the week, too. That's oh, three sneaky. That's in wow. That's, like, <laughs> insane. Because the Browns are, like I said, they're going up. And the Niners are just insane, too. Mm-hmm. So I could see it going either way. But I think I picked the Niners to go on a hot streak still. You do? Yeah. So you think the Niners win? 100%. I think the Browns will win. Okay. I, I like but this. I, We're getting conflicting I picks. Think, uh, I think OBJ needs to come back and show what he's good at, what he's at, what he's doing best. So that's my prediction. Okay. So I think that's it, Amal, right? Yeah, I think we covered everything we wanted to, right? Yeah, we did. Awesome. Anything else you got to say? Um... No, I think I just know that this is gonna be an exciting week. There's a lot of good games this week. Lots. Of I think good games. I didn't really watch much football last week. It was kind of boring, but this week we've got some really good games to look forward yeah, to. I agree. So um, I think we're done. Um, thanks for listening to this episode, you guys. Um, this is super fun to make. So if you enjoyed it and you want to like help us or whatever, just share it to anyone, your friends, post it on Instagram, do whatever you want. Thank you for listening. Have a good day and peace out. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Flea Flicker Podcast.